Hello everyone. It is currently the end of February, so as I'm filming this, we are nearing the end of the what's traditionally our RSP contribution period. And I'm continuing to have conversations with people about whether or not they should be contributing to their RSPs. So I've, I've done a few talks about RSPs. I encourage you to uh, go through the site and take a look at those. But I wanted to talk specifically about the RRSP um, optimization process, depending on what tax bracket you're in. And this was inspired by a conversation with a client who is just starting their career and already opened up their RRSP. So again, I'm a big fan of saving and it's never a bad thing to start that habit. But if you are in a low marginal tax rate, contributing to a registered retirement savings plan may not be the most tax efficient way for you to invest that money. And it may end up in actually costing more money down the road. And I'm gonna work through a specific example. Now, I'm, I've simplified the math, I've simplified the marginal tax rates. So don't bother sending me an email saying that, uh, that, that my math is wrong because those aren't the, the rates. Uh, I, I've rounded them to, to, um, to specific numbers that make things easy. And as marginal tax rates change over the years, the principle still applies. So this is a, a hypothetical income uh, for an individual over the course of their lifetime. Uh, not everybody fits into this, but the assumption is that this individual at age 25 is first into the workforce and earning uh, maybe under $50,000 and so is in a 20% marginal tax rate. Then as after 10 years of working, they are much more accomplished, they're professionals and uh, are, are earning uh, closer to $100,000, moved up into a 30% marginal tax rate. Then after age 45, they've uh, either become successful business people or uh, managers of their departments or professionals again, uh, and are in their, their peak earning years and in a 45%. So this is just 45%. And then in retirement at age 65, they lose all their sources of earning income. Uh, so they just have their Canada pension plan, old age security, and whatever pensions that they have paid into through working years or are drawing against their retirement savings at age 65 and go back to a 30% tax bracket. So it's 20, 30, and 45. So if this individual contributes $1,000 into their registered retirement savings plan during the time that they're in the 20% tax bracket, they are going to get a refund of $200. So I won't go through how that works because that is in other videos, but uh, at a 20% tax bracket, they're going to get $200 back. If that individual then in the, when they're 65 in the 30% tax bracket, withdraws that $1,000, that $1, they're going to pay $300 on that income. So right away you're going to see the the issue here that they save two hundred dollars but that same thousand dollars cost them two hundred dollars it's a difference of a hundred dollars that they've lost over the lifetime of that of that investment i'm just talking about the straight dollar cost not the increase in growth of those funds during that time through investment similarly if that person said well i'm not going to put the money in then because that doesn't make any sense I'm going to contribute my $1,000 here when I'm in my 30% tax bracket. How much are they going to get back? That's right, $300. And then in retirement, they withdraw that money and they pay $300 in tax on that. So it's a net difference of zero. So it's neither good nor bad that they've done that. And of course, they've had the opportunity of tax shelter growth during that time. So overall, it, it is, it's a good decision, but that depends on whether they've optimized other tax uh, advantage vehicles like the tax-free savings account or permanent life insurance. But what if that individual then says, well, I lost my eraser. 
but the individual says, forget contributing here. I'm going to maximize my, my investments in my RSP and contribute $1,000 at my highest marginal tax rate, which is 45% there. And they're going to get back how much? $450 in their investment. They can then reinvest that money. They can use it to offset debt or other purposes. Then when they withdraw that money, it's still going to cost $300 because we've been able to move down the 30% tax bracket. The difference there, of course, being they will have saved $150 of tax through this strategy. So the other thing to remember in this, for those of you who have watched some of my other videos, is that if you don't contribute in these years, you can defer that into your higher marginal tax rate. Every year you learn, you earn new RRSP contribution room, which you can then advance into the years when it makes the most sense. So do you need to contribute to an RRSP in this uh, current tax year? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on where you fall. If you are down in here, I would urge you to take a look at whether there are other vehicles that make more sense for you and defer them until you're in your highest marginal uh, tax earning years if that's the trajectory that you're on. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, again, I'm not, I, I'm not against the RSP. I think it's a great tool to be used when it does this kind of thing here to optimize your tax situation. If you have any questions, please contact me. You can put messages in down below or direct message me uh, through this. I'd love to hear your questions and thoughts on this. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, Mike Riley will be back with you again.